So welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for the Tierney webinar session two um, of maximizing your Clever Touch for hybrid and distance learning. Um, I'm Kaylee Fink. I am the Clever Touch product specialist at Tierney. Um, I've been um, at Tierney for almost a year, um, and then it's been an interesting year, first year for sure. And then I'm also joined by um, Devin Lensmeyer. She is our one of our marketing coordinators, and so she and I have put together everything that we're going to learn about and have um, do today on the webinar. So thank you all so much for taking the time um, to come and learn and um, you know get some more information um, on how to utilize different tools um, with your Clever Touch panel um, or if you're looking at purchasing Clever Touch as well um, and how that works with Zoom and Google Meet. Um, so those are the two we'll be focusing on today. Um, just before we get started, a little housekeeping things. So um, before we get started, I want to, I do have my video spotlighted for you. Um, there is an option if you are in the Zoom app um, and using this to watch the webinar um, up at the top, which says um, you are viewing Clever Touch's screen. If you just scroll to the top of your screen on your computer, um, and then next to that little green box is a view options menu. And when you click on that down menu, um, it'll pop down and then it will say um, there's an option for side by side mode. Um, this will, this is a really great feature that we will talk about today, but um, this will allow you to see me very clearly as I use the panel, um, but also allow you to see my shared screen, which is um, actually the panel that I'm sharing right now. Um, so you'll be able to see both both really well. Um, this is a major feature that I'll be talking about as well um, in Zoom and how we can utilize that in the classroom. Um, and then also, um, I have everybody muted just for a sense of background noise and things like that. Um, hopefully my kids and my dog don't, you know, my husband keeps them outside for a little bit, um, so I don't get any background noise. But um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the webinar, um, go through everything, and then afterwards, we'll utilize the chat feature, um, which worked really well last time, um, to just put your questions in. So I encourage you to write down your questions as I'm going through things, because I might answer them. Um, once you have them, I might answer them later on. Um, but um, at the end, you'll have time plenty of time um, to ask away questions and um, Devin and I will kind of manage that chat box um, and I'll answer those um, vocally as we go through them. So keep your questions and um, you know written down and then we'll definitely um, have time. But if you do have like a question and you want to throw it in the chat box, um, go ahead and do that as well. Okay, um, and then, yeah, um, so a little bit about me. Um, like I said, I've been with Tierney for almost a year now. Um, I was an educator for 13 years before that, and three of those years I spent in Wyoming, Michigan, um, at a district where I was the um, K through 12 technology integration specialist. Um, and during that time, um, two of those three years, we started an adoption program of interactive flat panels um, with Clever Touch. So um, through that, you you know, um, time I was able to really get to know the panels and help teachers integrate them in the classroom with different curriculum, um, all the way from pre-K through 12. So, um, and then also provide professional development and training to my teachers at my district. So um, it was really, really awesome. And then I got the opportunity to come on board with Tierney um, to actually do this all over the country. So normally um, I am traveling around um, the U.S. and um, doing things like this and um, doing demos for districts and trainings, but um, due to COVID, you know, we're all kind of here remote learning, which is great because now we can utilize um, the Clever Touch panel for so much more as well. So um, our goal today is to show you as much as we can and then get all your questions answered. Um, so just so you know, but my um, information, I'll make sure to throw in the chat box as well. Like I said, you're going to get a recording, so you'll have my email address and things like that. So today, we're going to talk about um, how to get the Zoom application on your panel, um, and then hosting versus joining, what that looks like, um, setting up your Zoom meeting. So like I said, that side-by-side -side mode, um, spotlighting your video, what that looks like, um, tips and tricks for lighting and sound. Um, I'm in my living room, so I have lighting um, challenges a lot of the time where the sun is and things like that. Um, in a classroom, you have overhead lighting most of the time, which which helps a lot. Um, but then we'll also talk about um, utilizing the different Clever Touch features during your Zoom meeting. 
Um, different scenarios for teaching your hybrid classrooms, ways to set up your camera, if you have uh, um, students in the room with you or all virtual, what that would look like. Different tools for engagement. So with um, Zoom, there come some different um, tools that you can utilize um, to increase engagement um, with your um, with your uh, uh, utilizing your Clever Touch panel. Sorry. Lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, and then what Zoom looks like versus other platforms for video conferencing. And then we'll go into Google Meet. Um, running the Google Meet from the panel through the Chrome browser or running it through a Chromebook. And then just some different scenarios um, on what that looks like if you are utilizing Google Meet. Um, so we'll go through both um, and how those look. Now, Zoom and um, Google Meet are not the only tools you can use. Um, there are other tools out there, GoToMeeting, Skype, things like that. Like that. These are just the tools that um, at Tyranny we have found that work the best with Clever Touch um, and with school districts around the country that we have worked with. So these are just the two we're focusing on today. But if you have questions um, for other um, tools, make sure you email them to me or um, send them my way and I will make sure um, to get those questions answered for you. All right. Okay. All right, so let's get started. So right now I'm actually just sharing um, my screen from my panel um, and I have a PowerPoint up there. So I'm gonna go back to my homepage. Um, so when you are first starting out with Zoom, it's really easy to actually download the application directly from your panel. Some districts I've talked to like to use our management um, device system to actually push that um, application out to all the panels. Um, but if you are a teacher in the class Room or you are um, you know utilizing the panel um, in a hybrid setting you can actually download it really easily um, I always utilize um, the Chrome browser so Chrome actually comes standard on our clever touch um, interactive flat panels um, and it is um, available for an update through our clever store which is included on the panel as well um, but once you go to the zoom website um, and navigate to that on the Chrome browser there's this little button up at the corner called join a meeting. And once I click that, um, you're actually going to be able to see, it will recognize the panel as an Android device right away, which is really nice. And then down here on the bottom, you have an option to download from Zoom. Um, the Google Play one will not work because we can't get Google Play on the actual panel, but download from Zoom will um, prompt a download and um, you just go through all of the different prompts and then it will actually install it right away onto your panel. Um, and then it will be in your apps menu. So if I go to apps, scroll over, I have the Zoom app right there. Now, when you get started um, hosting your meeting, so right now I'm actually hosting my meeting um, from my computer, my laptop that's sitting in front of me. I have it sitting up on a high top chair. And then I have my camera actually connected to my laptop. Now, the reason for this is so that you can see me using the panel very clearly, but I'm also able to join as a guest. And if you can see the guest list or you saw the guest list when you started, you'll see that one of the guests on, on our meeting is Clever Touch, and that's actually my panel. So my panel is joined through the Zoom app, and all I do is utilize that meeting ID and password, and I type that in when I'm going to open my um, Zoom app, and then what I do from there is I actually share my screen. So there's a couple technicalities of making sure that um, you're allowing screen sharing from your, um, from your meeting. Um, as the host, you can allow certain people to share their screen, or you can allow multiple participants to share. And then the other thing is to make sure um, that you share the screen from the panel. Um, there's just a little option down at the bottom. It looks a little weird because it's like picture in picture if I have my video on, um, but it's very easy to do. So um, sharing my screen from my panel, um, and then what I can do, and you will see this as we go through, is now I can open any of my applications and utilize them um, you know, from, from my panel. So I don't necessarily have to um, open you know, a specific computer or anything like that. I can utilize everything that's on my panel in my Android interface on the Zoom call. And like I said, with that side-by-side -side mode and spotlight video as the host and as the teacher, 
my students are able to see me very clearly utilizing the panel going through content but then see the content very clearly next to it um, there are two little bars next to between the shared screen and the spotlight video and then what you can do is you can actually move that back and forth to make your spotlight video bigger or smaller so if maybe i want them to zoom in on me a little bit i can have them move that bar um, i usually have it at about like 75 25 percent but you can always increase it which is great um, and then um, what that will do is really give you um, that engagement piece of seeing the teacher teach, utilizing tools on the panel, um, but also able to see that content very clearly, which is very nice. Um, another thing about um, Zoom is you have the gallery view. So if I were to cancel my spotlight video right now, I'm able to see all of you if you have your cameras on. So if I'm teaching a class and I want to be able to see you know, all of my students, there's a gallery view and then there's the speaker view. So if you have one individual speaker, it moves to that speaker. And then if you have gallery view, you can see everyone. Well, in that side-by-side -side mode, you can still see the shared screen. So you can talk about content um, or maybe a diagram or something you're discussing but then you'll be able to see everyone's face. And then also as the teacher, as the host, I can unmute um, particular participants um, when, when they um, are ready to um, speak. So those are kind of those um, different setting up. So like I said, I host from my computer and then I join as a participant and share my screen from my panel, okay? Um, tips and tricks um, for lighting, sound, camera location. So. Lighting, like I said, I have a huge window in my living room and two windows behind that that have caused me to really have to work around um, lighting, especially during different times of the day. The great thing is, is no matter what my lighting looks like, hopefully you can see me very clearly right now. If the screen goes white, I get dark a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, but you can still see my screen, which is really great. So just keeping that lighting in mind, um, usually if you're in a classroom or in building with overhead lighting it doesn't cause a glare on the panel at all and it doesn't cause you to darken at all so those are kind of some things to think about but once you do go to that like um, lighter background um, you know as you kind of saw um, it does kind of darken a little bit but it it's not it's not significant so you can still see me and see the content at the same time um, another thing about um, sound, so normally I actually have been using um, the camera I use as a Logitech Brio. And that is just the one that I utilize a lot. We have tons of cameras at Tierney that we can offer that go along um, to set up a scenario like this or um, allow you to have a webcam with your Clever Touch panel um, and be able to utilize that in different ways. So we have a return to school guide, which I'll talk about at the end. And Devin will make sure that at the end of the webinar, we'll put that link in so that we can definitely um, be able to share that with you and you can go take a look at the different cameras we offer. Um, but with that, Logitech Brio, um, you know, has, you know, a um, great microphone and I, utilize, I usually utilize that when I'm doing demos. We found though with the recording and wanting to use this on our website that me using a microphone is actually easier and it sounds better. The, cl the quality of sound is better just because it's closer. So, um, so those are things to think about. Obviously, if you're in a classroom and you have students and you do have um, a virtual environment going on at the same time, um, that's something to think about. Am I going to need to record my voice directly to my device as I'm you know, doing a Zoom call and have the students in the classroom? Um, some different scenarios that we've talked about is having the students in the classroom join in the Zoom call. So you have all participants together um, and then setting up your camera so you can still see the students in your classroom, but then you can, the camera can also see you working with the panel. Um, another way to set up your camera would be on the side. So you'll kind of see this when I go into the Google Meet part um, because you can utilize the Chromebook. Um, well, I'm going to run it on a Chromebook, but you can utilize the camera that you're using on your laptop. Um, when you are utilizing the Google Meet portion of it um, by connecting an external um, laptop. So I'll show you what that looks like as well. But 
I easily could take my camera, move it over the side, still say, um, still see all of my students in the classroom, um, but be able to, you know, direct my attention to the camera every once in a while, be able to still utilize all of my different tools up here on the panel, um, and then still be able to keep everyone engaged as far as, you know, content, things like that. Um, you know, things like that. So I can still utilize all those tools. So it's just a matter of setting it up in the best way that you would, um, that it works for you in your classroom with your students, depending on how many students you have. Um, another thing about the camera is making sure that it's elevated. So I used to use, <laughs> I used to, when this whole thing kind of started, I would have just my um, laptop on a chair that was way down here. And I felt like I was speaking, you know, looking at my content, but then my camera was all the way down and it was, yeah, it was bad angle. So the great thing about elevating everything is that I don't have to strain my neck and I can keep my line of view with everything in my classroom and in my area. So if I have students over here, if I have students over here, I can still see my camera, they can still be engaged with everything. Um, so just, you know, making sure that that's elevated up um, and utilizing anything you have, because that's what I've done. So, <laughs> um, so those are some different um, tips and tricks about the camera. And we'll definitely make sure to make a list of those and send those out. Um, so one thing about the Clever Touch um, user interface is that you have so many tools that you can utilize to engage your students. Um, not only our free software, which I'm actually going to be doing another webinar on for Snowflake and Lynx um, later on in July, so um, be on the lookout for those. Um, but not only those, but I can still utilize any of my applications that I've downloaded. So if I have certain applications, um, like you know, learning games or Khan Academy, and I want to show those things on my panel, I can still utilize that. I also can still utilize things like, um, you know, my um, Chrome browser. So if I go back into my Chrome browser, let's say I have some content on here, and I want to do side by side with my whiteboard. So what I can do is I can do my active um, windows, side by side mode with my whiteboard. And then I can still have that content and those tools that I'm utilizing, um, but be able to still, you know, have my, um, have my content over here, and I'm still able to teach my class. So I'm, you know, engaging people, I'm utilizing what I have on the panel, um, but then also able to share that screen very easily and that content very easily. So there's lots of different ways that I can still utilize all of the Clever Touch interface. So this is one big benefit of running Zoom from the panel and being able to share my screen. I have all my teaching tools, my annotation tools, you saw me right on the panel earlier. Um, I have the, you know, the ability to utilize any type of file that I want to open if I have a PDF or things like that, a picture. I mean, I have that ability to use my whole Clever Touch panel um, and all the tools that I would need to teach my class with the ability to connect um, through a hybrid or distance learning environment. So that's what this scenario, this setup really allows you to do. Um, speaking of tools, so we're going to talk a little bit about tools for engagement. We already talked a little bit about scenarios for hybrid learning. Um, so we talked about, you know, teaching um, where you are the only one in the classroom utilizing your Clever Touch panel. Um, you could be, you know, teaching and recording your session. So I'm recording the session actually from Zoom. Um, we will be releasing soon a link screen recorder, which will allow you to um, record your voice if you have a Impact Plus panel um, or if you plug in a microphone. Um, but if you um, just record your screen, you can record a lesson and then put a voiceover on it. Um, but some tools like that will allow you to do that as well. Um, Google Meet will allow you to um, record. It will just be in a different um, setting and you'll see that soon. But I'm able to record my lesson, teach to my class, and then also have everything, um, you know, still um, in a video for later on if they need to watch it. Um, and then another um, classroom setup we talked about was having um, a classroom of students in front of you. So physically having, you know, 
students there in DAS, and they could join from their own devices to the Zoom meeting, so you're all together in the same Zoom meeting. Um, or you could have your um, hybrid classroom set up to the side, have your physical classroom in front of you um, with your physical students there, um, and then be able to teach to both at the same time and still record that lesson so that anytime anyone isn't there, it's available for them to watch. Um, it might be also really helpful to send that home with all students because then they can always rewatch it if they need to. Um, so those are some of the different um, kind of scenarios that um, that we can um, that we've been kind of talking about to different districts all over um, just how to kind of set up your classroom and start visualizing what that's going to look like um, if as you're utilizing these tools tools for engagement so um, we talked about some you know different tools with the clever touch panels you have whiteboard you have applications you have um, annotation tools things like that that are built into the panel well there's also some tools built into zoom that are really nice to use as well so I'm gonna go back here I keep opening back up my uh, my Chrome screens just so I have some content on there. So if we were having a discussion about this um, story and things like that and we were talking about keywords, um, you know, I may have you move that bar back and forth so that my screen is smaller and or my video is smaller and your screen is bigger. Um, but in Zoom, there's actually tools built in. And as I share my panel, you can see these pop up. Um, and these are the annotation tools. And like I said, this is a Zoom tool. So these are really nice because I actually can turn on annotations and I can start writing and of course you'll see it. But as a participant, if you scroll up to view the view options menu at the top of Zoom and you click on that, there should be an annotate option there. If you're in a browser, it's a little bit different and I haven't figured that out how that works yet, but you should be able to, if you're in the Zoom app, go up to view options, click annotate, and then feel free to start writing on the board. So this really helps with engagement. I can think of so many ways that I could utilize this. Now, some teachers have said, well, I don't know if I want students writing on, but, you know, thinking about students being apart from each other and being able to start collaborating and circle things and put stickers on or you ask a question to find a keyword and everybody picks a different color. There's also a sticker that um, has an arrow with their names on it. So you can put that on there as well. So if you ask a question, you can see everyone's name um, and what answer they chose. So thinking of putting a quiz on there or or a review, um, just so many different cool ways that you could utilize this with students um, and to really keep them engaged as you're teaching a lesson, whether they're in the classroom or they're um, at home learning. So um, just a quick, easy way. And then as the teacher, you have lots of different things like Spotlight where I can move this around. I have a highlighter tool, um, undo, redo, clear. And then I also, can stop annotation and then it takes everybody away. So I still have that control as a teacher. The thing I really like though, that if I go back to annotation, it doesn't get rid of anything until I clear the board. So if I wanna go back, revisit something we talked about and then go back in and start those annotations again, I can do that. So you have a lot of options here with annotations. Um, another thing is reactions. So if you scroll to the bottom of Zoom, there's a little reactions tab. Um, you can do thumbs up or raise your hand. Well, it looks, it's clap, but it makes me think of raise your hand. So um, where you can utilize those different reactions, obviously you can unmute and mute people as well. Um, so really utilizing um, that talking feature as well. Um, but I like those reactions. Sometimes they're fun, remind you of like emojis and kids love that. So um, Another tool that I really like is actually the whiteboard feature, and I'm going to just quickly share um, my screen and show you what that whiteboard looks like. So if I just share a whiteboard, that is the same like I was sharing before as far as um, you know, sharing the whiteboard feature and being able to utilize text, um, drawing, um, 
things like that. So there's lots of different features, um, you know, in Zoom itself that you can start utilizing um, to get your students engaged and things like that. Um, and then just as easily I can stop sharing and then I'll go back to sharing my screen. But this allows everyone to start annotating, um, interacting with content, brainstorming, collaborating, collaborating, things like that. Um, another feature, as I'll talk about as I share my screen, um, is to um, utilize um, the breakout rooms. So this is something that, this is what it looks like if you go back to share your screen on the panel. I'll do that picture in picture thing, there we go. Um, so another thing to utilize is um, the breakout rooms. So this is where you can actually take different participants, put them in a room together, and then they can start collaborating. And I know Google Meet has the same feature, which I think is amazing. Um, so thinking about groups taking content, so having a full lesson where you teach as the teacher, and then you know you have different content breakout rooms where maybe students are physically in the classroom and at home in a in a group together. Um, you know, or however that might look. Um, so different tools that you can use built into Zoom um, to still, like I said, keep that engagement um, and really help you utilize all the platforms that you have together. Um, so annotations, reactions, whiteboard, and breakout rooms. Um, I'm sure there's more. If you have more, please share in the chat box. Um, but those are the ones that are the main ones that I've kind of utilized um, with schools to help them with engagement. Um, so Zoom versus other platforms for video conferencing, as we move into Google Meet, um, and I will actually sign into my computer here in a second, my Chromebook. Um, as we move in, so you'll see kind of the differences once I get started utilizing um, Google Me on um, the panel that it you know with Zoom they've really um, upped their game with a lot of things but they just have a certain um, without getting too technical a certain framework that they create um, that allows them to have a very clear focused and quick um, uh, audio and video feed. So the audio and video quality that you get with Zoom is different um, than what you will get with Google Meet, GoToMeetings, Skype, all of those. Um, so just remember that when thinking about, you know, this situation or the setup for your classrooms, um, you know, it's just a different experience. Um, but, um, but they all work in different ways and help you to connect in a hybrid environment, distance learning environment. So, um, but that's just kind of how Zoom is different from the other ones. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, stop sharing my screen up on the panel and um, switch over. Um, I have to log into my Chromebook here for a second. Um, and you can utilize, um, you know, any type of, um, any type of uh, you know laptop, MacBook, Chromebook, whatever it is, I'm utilizing a Chromebook just because that's what I have, and we have a lot of districts that only utilize Chromebooks or only use Chromebooks and use Google Meet. Now remember, you can still use Zoom on a Chromebook. They have an extension for it, um, and you can still join Zoom, a Zoom call from a Chromebook if you just go to zoom.us and join a meeting, and you have that ID and password. So, um, so those are different things to think think about, um, um, but I'm gonna switch over. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to change my input um, because it will automatically change. I no longer can share my screen because I'm not connected through Zoom on here. If I were to util utilize Google Meet, couple different ways you can do this, and I'll share this really quickly before I switch over. Um, if I go back to that Chrome browser, one way I can join a meeting, so let's say that I, you know, am just um, hosting a meeting for my students, we're all going to join in, um, and I need to just get on, you know, my panel, and I want to be able to just, um, you know, utilize my camera connected to my panel and join a meeting. So maybe we're all just in a classroom, and then we're joining with everyone at home. Um, no need to share my screen or things like that, because that is something you cannot do. Um, you're not 
able to do in the Chrome browser on the panel. Um, so I can't share my screen like I did with Zoom because it's not an application that's downloaded. Um, so, oh, it wants me longer. So once I would get to meet.google.com, I would be able to, you know, join a meeting, start a meeting, whatever that is, and run that through my panel. Like I said, if I um, plugged in my, um, my webcam, I can utilize that as my microphone and my webcam at the same time. Or if you were to join from your laptop. So let's go over and I'm going to switch over um, to my USB-C port where my laptop is, or my Chromebook is. And like I said, you can still use a laptop with this. Um, it will probably stop sharing. There we go. Still should be able to see me pretty well. I'm going to switch over here again. There we go. So you'll see that um, on my Chromebook, once it comes up, that I still have the ability to um, you know, run my, my meeting. So let's say I'm on Google Meet and I join from my laptop. So essentially I might have two um, different devices going um, or like I had talked about before, I may just join from my um, Chromebook or from my laptop and have that plugged into my panel so that I can see um, or utilize that screen. But if I was just joining, um, from the um, from a different device, this is what it would look like. So I can still have the ability to share my screen. That is really what um, this will allow me to do. So if I am going to Google Meet, and I have pictures to really explain this, since we're all in Zoom right now and it would take a lot for us to switch over to Google Meet, um, I have pictures to kind of explain this. So I'll show those to you when I'm all finished. Um, so what I would do is I would go to um, Google Meet and I would join or start a meeting. Um, and then once I do that, I can have my participants start, um, start to join. And then what I would end up doing is, once I join and I have all my participants, there's a couple different ways, and I'm going to stop my microphone so you can kind of see my living room here. is I would be able to then start sharing my screen. So here I have, um, you know, my participants are here. I can present. So once I present, then that would allow me to share any of my tabs, my entire screen or my application window. So if you've been in Google Meet, same kind of situation. The only thing I'm able to do right now, if I do have a separate device and a camera, is you can see me utilizing the screen. Um, the only difference is, is once I were to share this, um, my video would be smaller. So in Zoom, we have that side-by-side -side mode that you can make that video bigger or smaller so you can really see what I'm doing on the panel as I'm going through things. Um, with Google Meet, what they have right now for their viewing options is a sidebar, and that puts all of your people on, or all of your participants on one side of the shared screen. So I have my shared screen and then all of the participants. Like I said, I have a picture of it. Um, so what it, this still allows me to utilize everything on my panel um, as far as if I had an external device plugged in. So meaning I can still use, you know, my annotation tools um, and essentially I could still use the Clever Touch interface, but the only view I would get is from my camera and of me teaching instead of me actually sharing um, the the panel screen. All you would see is actually my Chromebook screen or my laptop screen. And I know there's some other tools, some annotation tools and things built in into um, Google Meet, breakout rooms, things like that. So like I said, different experience, but still able to utilize and have the same type of, um, you know, setup as far as having students join um, from their computers or in the classroom or from home and still be able to engage in that, um, in that content and in that lesson. Okay. Um, so 
different ways to kind of set that up. Like I said, you can still utilize um, your camera. If I had that facing me um, and I was utilizing that and had my camera from my laptop facing me, I could utilize it that way. Um, or I could set up another device like I'm doing and be able to um, have that full screen of me teaching the lesson. Um, like I said, you just don't get that full screen um, video. So we'll switch back over and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Um, you can still utilize the Chrome um, interaction, the Google Meet platform um, through the camera though still with sharing your screen and things like that. So I can still utilize all those tools. And the great thing is, is that our distance learning software that comes included with Clever Touch, you can use that on a web browser as well as Links. So Links is our um, app software application um, that you can create interactive lessons and things like that. You can still utilize it this way. Um, you would just be sharing your screen through the Google Meet and you wouldn't get that large video next to it. So I'm gonna hop back over um, to my main screen, share again in Zoom, and then I will show you some different um, ways that, hopefully nobody gets dizzy from looking at that, I do sometimes. Um, some different ways that um, this, this setup kind of looks. So if I go back to my PowerPoint here, It's kind of hard to explain the Google Meet without really being in it. So we took some pictures um, to kind of show you. Um, so this is the Google Meet. So this would be if I were presenting and I was um, able to, you know, have my, my camera on me from, from the front and be able to teach and things like that. The more people I get over here, I just have two right now, but the more participants I get, that, can't, that video gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you have a whole class of 20 participants or more, your, camera, your video is going to be very tiny. Um, Google Meet has not done that spotlight video um, feature yet, but I, you know what? I have faith that they're gonna just continue to add things. Um, so, but that's just the difference between um, Zoom and Google Meet as far as the spotlight video and that side-by-side -side mode, just looks a little bit different. Still able to utilize um, sharing my screen and engaging students though. And then here we have, so kind of to go back, your side-by-side -side mode. So here we have our participants over here. I have my Clever Touch panel. I can spotlight my video, which I have another picture of, but able to utilize all of my Clever Touch, um, you know, interface as far as whiteboard, apps, Chrome browser, all the things that I would use, normally use in my classroom to teach, um, I still have the ability to use all of those tools. And then you also have Zoom gallery view. So if I did not spotlight my video, but I'm still teaching and I have gallery view, um, I'm able to share my screen and then see participants up at the top. And then you have spotlight video. So as you're seeing me right now, um, you have your shared um, screen for, from cl your Clever Touch panel, and then you have your spotlight video on the teacher or presenter on the side. So able to give you that really nice, clean side-by-side -side view um, to be able to um, keep that engagement and um, be able to see the presenter actually teaching, which is really great. So. Um, I think that's all that I have. So let's start um, with questions and answers. I know that the chat has been going a little bit, so I'm going to open that up um, to try to see where we're at. But feel free to start dropping in your questions. And I'm going to set my screen up here so I can see everything. Um, and I know Devin has answered some of them. So let's go down. Um, yes, we will get a copy of the tips and tricks. I will make one and send that out with the recording um, as well as um, the, yep, the recording itself. So you'll get all that. So let's go, Becky. Is the teacher able to view each of the breakout rooms as groups are working? I believe so. This is one feature I have not dove into because I haven't had like a huge group, um, but I will check in on that, but I believe so. They are able to see and view um, and join each breakout room is my understanding of it, um, so that the teacher or the host can still um, utilize 
utilize that communication with each individual um, breakout room as it's happening. Um, Yes, Sarah, I know a lot of districts are not allowing um, the use of Zoom. So that's why I really wanted to show you that Google Meets can still be utilized. Um, it still has some really great features as far as breakout rooms, sharing whiteboard, um, you know, having all the, the interactions, you can still utilize your panel um, and run that Google Meet um, through a computer and have this set up. Um, you know, I would just use a Chromebook that you have, plug it in and join from there and share your screen. So you're still able to use your Chromebook, um, you know, layout and things like that for teaching tools. Um, or you can just set up your um, webcam in front of your Clever Touch screen. And I tell you what, that's how I did it for all the years I was doing um, integration as an integration specialist, I would do my videos just like you're seeing me now without a shared screen. So this is kind of an enhanced version, but, um, but you can still utilize it that way as well. So um, can you still use the annotations using Meet? Yes, but they will not be shared through the screen. So if I write um, using these annotation tools, um, right now you can see them in Zoom, but if I were on my um, screen um, on my Chromebook, you would not be able to see them on the shared screen, but you would be able to see them just in the video part. So that's, that's one of the downfalls. But I believe Google Meet has their own annotation tools built in. Um, I'm not sure, not completely positive, but I believe that might be one of the features I read about that they added. Um, where do you enable the spotlight video? So when you are hosting a meeting, um, you can go, um, you can scroll over all of the videos. And if you scroll over your video, there is, and you can't do it right now because we're, you're not hosting, but if you're hosting, I believe, you, there's three little dots that show up when you hover over your video. And those three little dots will, if you click on it, gives you some options for your video. So that person's video, you can pin, which means that they stay right there. Or as the host, um, you can actually use those three little dots and it says spotlight video. And that will allow you to spotlight your video for everyone um, in the meeting. And that will stay that way until you scroll over it and hit cancel spotlight video. Then everybody will come back up. Um, is there a way to know who is typing on the screen with the annotation features? So that is one thing I have not figured out yet. Um, the thing that I would utilize probably the most are those arrows with your name in it. Um, so that would probably be, or I would have them like put an arrow and then circle something. Um, that might have to be a little creative to figure out who's doing what. Um, but there's also a poll feature. So if you wanted to ask questions to get specific answers from everybody, you can use the poll feature as well in Zoom. Um, is there a place where we can find from home what apps are available for Clever Touch apps? We have some are learning over the summer for student use. Um, Leah, as far as Clever Touch applications, we have a Clever store um, that you, I believe I can find a list to send to you, if that's what you're meaning, of all of the apps that are in there um, that are available on the Clever Touch panel. But my big suggestion for Yulia is to utilize Snowflake and Links. Um, Snowflake especially, they have everything built in for distance learning um, and tons of different activities. And if you haven't dove into that yet, um, I will be hosting, um, I'm going to schedule it actually today, hosting a, my next webinar will be um, about Snowflake and utilizing that with the Clever Touch panel in a hybrid distance learning environment. Um, so watch for that. Um, and then um, that and then once link seven is released and that should be soon um, that is also going to be cloud-based so you can share lessons um, send different files um, to students um, and then they can be able to open those up on um, 
on your on their Chromebooks and um, devices at home. Um, but link, um, Snowflake is a great one to look into, um, and I can make sure that we have a link to that as well. Um, if you don't have a Clever Touch panel or your um, your Link Snowflake account, I'm sorry, Snowflake account set up, um, there is a 60 day, I believe, um, trial right now that they're running still, um, where you can sign up and try that out with your students um, as they're learning from home right now. So, um, so that's a really good one. So I'll make sure. And yes, if you would like to attend, we will make sure if you are on the email list and got the invite for this particular webinar, you will get that also when we send that next one out. Okay. Um, Leah, I hope that answered your question. Okay. Um, have you tested with Microsoft Teams? Yes, Brett, I've done it uh, maybe once or twice with Microsoft Teams. Again, the video quality, the audio quality is different. Um, still able to use, you can run the app from the screen, but I'm not sure if you can share your screen. I don't think I got that far. I think I was just running the applications because this was kind of before we dove into Zoom and started spending all our time on that. So, um, so I, Brett, if you email me, I will get back with you and I can test that this week and see how it works. Um, Cause that is one that we've had quite a few um, enterprise customers ask about. When is the webinar for the Snowflake and Links? I think Mary, we're going to try to um, do those in July. Um, my goal is to do maybe, we have one scheduled for next week for enterprise customers, and then um, possibly so the next week after that, and then the week after that. So we'll try to get Links and Snowflake in before the end of July. If that's possible, we can do that. Um, do you think teachers need to wear a microphone to present clearly? Um, Kathleen, that's a really good question. So there's a whole kind of um, discussion around um, wearing, if teachers are wearing masks, audio in the classroom. And that is something at Tierney that we're diving into as well. And we have audio systems that you can pair with your Clever Touch with your hybrid environment and be able to um, use that microphone to either enhance your audio in the classroom if you are wearing a mask or even record your audio from your computer like you would be doing now in a Zoom meeting. Um, so those are some things I would encourage you to reach out to your Tierney rep. If you don't know who that is, Kathleen, um, send me an email um, of your location or where you're at, what state, and I will um, get you connected with them because they have some awesome, awesome um, knowledge base as far as audio um, in the classroom and how that would work. But I think wearing a microphone, I know from our recording last time, it helped a lot with the recording and be able to hear. Plus, if you have students in the classroom and they're talking, that background noise is something to think about as well. Um, can Google Meets work with the Clever Touch that has the Android platform on it? Um, it will not, it will work through the Chrome browser like I showed, but it will not download as an application. Um, Google has a certain um, certification process for their applications, um, which they do not allow IFP companies to be able to download their applications. So you cannot download the Zoom app, or you cannot download the Google Meet app like I downloaded the Zoom app onto the panel. Um, so you would have to run it through the Chrome web browser or an external device like I showed. Um, Link 7 has not been released yet, but is coming very, very soon. Um, hopefully by the end of July, we're looking at a release date for that. I will, I'm getting an update from Clever Touch almost every day on that. Um, but they've added some awesome, awesome things. And I will be hosting a webinar um, once that is released to showcase all of those different features because there are some really, really great features in there. Um, if you've used Link 6, all, all the same features you love are still there, um, plus more, which is really great. So, um, and then, yes, okay. Yep, Leah, I will make sure that we are able to get a list of those. Um, I will say that the Kevin Bradford apps I know are available. Um, if you just look up Kevin Bradford as the um, app developer in the um, Android or iTunes store, all of those um, first grade, second grade learning games are the ones that I know are available um, also on um, iPads and Android tablets. My kids actually use them as well as on the. The, um, 
uh, Clever Touch panel. So I know those are available, but I will try to find a list of the apps we have available um, that might be available for kids to download at home. Um, is there a charge for Snowflake and Links? Um, Mary, with um, the purchase of your Clever Touch panel, there is no charge for Snowflake and Links. Our, all of our software programs are included with the purchase of the panel. Um, so with one um, panel purchase, you get five licenses for Snowflake. Um, so guest teachers in your room, parapros, you know, um, parent volunteers, anybody that you would like to share that license with, you have five of them when you purchase one panel and then links is actually free to download um, whether you have a panel or not and like I said with snowflake there is a 60-day trial so you can try it out as well um, what is your opinion on students needing headphones Molly good question um, I think that if you are um, utilizing all of your students in a zoom room at one time headphones are going to be very important because if you unmute one student and they're sitting in the back of the room or in the middle of the room, wherever it is, and their microphone on their computer unmutes and they start talking, everybody's speakers are going to start, you know, using that audio. So you'd have to really think about, is everyone muted with their audio down and they're just listening through the Clever Touch panel? That might be one scenario. Um, or are you unmuting and then having all the audio come through the um, Clever Touch panel? Um, or are you having everyone wear headphones and then they're just speaking and listening as you go through the lesson? So definitely some things to think about um, and definitely another tool that might be helpful um, in this whole situation as we start to plan how we're, how we're going to do that, how you guys are going to do this um, as you go back in the classroom. So definitely something to think about. In my opinion, I think it'd be helpful just to have them on hand um, if I am going to have all my students in my class join one Zoom meeting together. Um, how is Snowflake and Links different? So um, Snowflake, and I can show you this really quickly on here. So Snowflake um, is a web-based application that comes included um, in our Clever Store, but then also you can access from um, the Snowflake website. And it's just snow.live if you want to check it out. And like I said, I have a 60-day free trial. I will send that link for that um, with our follow-up email. So you guys can take a look at that. But Snowflake, I think about as um, activities-based. So thinking drag and drop, um, you know, select the answer, um, move something around, type in a word, um, things like that where I'm taking content that I've either taught already or I'm maybe pre using a pre-assessment with um, and I want to see you know what knowledge my students have to gather that um, or I want to test them on something and like I said I could go into snowflake for hours because it is an amazing amazing tool but um, really quickly I would say it's activities based it is web-based, so I can log in from any device and access my account. Um, I can create using any of the templates of content that Snowflake's um, educational technology specialists that they hire have created. I can use that content or I can change that content. So I can use the template and change the content to whatever I want. I can send it to my students. They can use it at home on their device from anywhere. They can interact with the content, um, do the activities, and then I can also now send feedback if, if it's a grade, graded assessment, things like that. So lots and lots of ways to utilize Snowflake um, activities-based um, uh, program um, from the web. So that's Snowflake. Links is going to be your more robust content. So think, um, you know, Promethean and Active Inspire, Smart Notebook, um, you know, things like that, where I'm creating a PowerPoint presentation or a content-based presentation on my own content from scratch. And then I'm putting in, you know, a video here and some media here. And then I have some movable items here um, or maybe a hide and reveal tool. Um, I really can create everything from scratch. This is more template based. Um, Links is going to be more robust content created um, from scratch on your on from your own knowledge base. 
if that makes sense. But link seven to add on to that will be cloud-based, meaning I can download the application onto any device I have, log into my cloud account and access not only my links cloud drive with all of my files, but I can access the computer I'm on, I can access my um, Google Drive files as well, and I can share and I can um, send to students and I can link to pages and so many other things. So. Definitely check out those two um, webinars because I don't want to take up all of our time talking about Leaks and Snowflake because I totally could because I'm such a teacher at heart. I love software. I think that it, it just enhances what you have with a Clever Touch panel um, so much more. So um, hopefully that answered your question. Okay, is Snowflake and Links available on all Clever Touches? Yes. Um, you don't think you're, okay. Um, it sh Snowflake and links are downloadable from the Clever Store. If you do not have the Clever Store, you might have a different model. Um, so Shannon, if you can email me, we can always set up a time to look at your panel and see what you have available. Um, but as a Clever Touch customer, you still should have access to Snowflake and links at least on your computer. And then you can always, um, you can sideload them or load them onto your panel, I believe. So we'll we'll try, if you email me, Shannon, we can set up a time to talk about that because you might have a certain, an older series or the V series that maybe doesn't have the Clever Store, um, but we have ways um, that you can still utilize Snowflake and links on your um, computer um, with your students. Um, so Andrea, the Zoom app is not actually on the Clever Store. Um, you have to download it from their website or push it through your MDM. And the reason we haven't put it on the Clever Store um, is because the Zoom app actually has the ability when you download it onto the panel, has the ability to update itself. Um, so therefore, if we put it on the Clever Store, we would have to run that update and it doesn't make sense when you can just download it once and then it continually updates anytime a new update is released. Um, so that's why it's not on the Clever Store. So using, um, using the um, Zoom website to download is going to be my suggestion. And we do have directions for that and I will send that out as well with our follow-up email. Um, Yes, downloading from zoom.us. Yeah, download from Zoom is, is what it's going to be. When you hit join a meeting, download from Zoom. And like I said, we'll send um, out those directions so you have that as well. Okay. Um, MDM instructions, Andrea, email me and that can, um, we can definitely talk about how to do that from um, the MDM as well. Um, it's definitely another um, you know, webinar or instructions, but um, email me and I have instructions on how to do that as well. Okay. Wow, you guys had some really, really awesome questions. Um, so yeah, if you have any more, I'm gonna stick around for a couple more minutes. Um, but just really quickly, I wanna say thank you so much for joining. Um, I definitely have um, really enjoyed doing these webinars, connecting with um, you know more teachers and people um, that are utilizing Clever Touch and Zoom and Google Meet and how these tools can help us really effectively um, teach and engage our students no matter where they are um, come this fall. So if you have questions, um, my email, I will put it up here in just a second. Really quickly, I want to direct you and we'll make sure to include this link as well um, to our return to school guide. This has all of our different um, you know, technologies and products that we offer that will help, and Devin just put it in the chat box, um, that will help you set up this hybrid distance learning environment in your classroom for the fall. So um, if you don't know who your Tierney um, rep is in your area, email myself or Devin, we will get you connected with them. But go on the um, return to school guide website um, on the Tierney website. Check that out. We have tons of different tools in there, um, including Clever Touch, Zoom, webcams, um, microphones, everything you would need. So definitely check that out. Um, and then I definitely want to say thank you again. Here's my email and Evans. If you have questions, um, 
please watch for an email from Devin um, with this recording as well as um, all the things we talked about. Hopefully Devin was keeping the list. I'll make sure to go through the chat so that we um, have all those things that we want to send. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Reach out um, if you have um, specific things that you want to talk about. And um, if you have any, yeah, anything else, let me know. But thank you guys so much. Thanks for joining. Um, this has been definitely um, a pleasure of mine to connect everybody and show you all these different tools. So I hope everyone has a great day. Stay safe, stay well, and um, take care. Thank you. Thank you.